So welcome everybody to this session, the Alma Collaborative Network and Shared Catalog for Network Zone Consortia. This is the first session of a new series, the Alma Network Zone Consortia webinar series. I assume that everybody has the link to this webinar series because I know that many of you registered from this link, but I will send this out in the chat in any case. Those of you viewing this via YouTube, we're sorry you couldn't join us live, but you have a link to this page in the description of the recording of the video. So the Alma Network Zone Consortia webinar series, let's confirm who this is appropriate for. So I'm going to look at the invitation just to make sure we're all together here. This series is specifically for institutions who are part of a network zone consortia. We will show in a moment what that means so you can confirm that you're part of a network zone consortia if for whatever reason you're not quite sure. But as we state here, this is for the working staff users working in a member institution of a network zone consortia or they work in the institution which is the network zone. Those users who have a standalone environment, an Alma standalone environment, which is not part of a network zone consortia, this is not relevant. So what does it mean? How do you know if you're part of a network zone consortia? So I here am in an institution which as we see from the icon is called Open University. And Open University is a member institution of a network zone consortia. And therefore, when this, when a staff user at this institution does a search, he or she has the option to search by institution, by network, or by community. And after a search is done, the staff user will have an option to switch tabs between the institution here, the network, or the community. This is an all title search. I'm using the new all title search. We'll talk about that soon. Uh, but any search has the option, let's search by electronic collection. I shouldn't say any search. Bibliographic related searches, a few other searches, have the option of switching between the tabs of institution, network, or community. That means you're part of a network zone consortia. If you are a just using a standalone Alma institution, I now switched browsers and switched institutions, you will not have an option here for network. You won't have an option there for network when you search choosing a scope, and you also won't have the option to switch between member institution, network, and community from the results. Here, for example, we have only institution and community because this is a standalone, and where we were previously here in a member institution of a network zone consortia, we have the option for institution, network, and community. So now we're all on the same page of who this is relevant for or for whom this is relevant. Uh, are there any questions or comments on that before we begin the actual session? I'm just going to check the chat here and see. I see no questions or comments. Okay, so I'm assuming that's clear to everybody in that everybody here in the session is either a member working in a member institution of a network zone consortia or working in the institution which is the network. Now, on this page of the network zone consortia, we have links to the relevant materials. For example, here, May 29 and May 30, we're on the Alma Collaborative Network Zone Consortia. And here's a link to the PowerPoint presentation. I will be only briefly showing this PowerPoint presentation. We'll be doing everything live, but all of the material for all of the sessions will be here in the column called accompanying resources. So everybody can download whatever is needed. 
Uh, we already have uh, several of the next sessions. For example, next week we've got a session. We already have the option to register for that session. June 12th, we don't have a session. That's a holiday here. And uh, in Israel, that's a holiday. And for some others around the world, so we're skipping that week. Uh, June 19th, you can already register. June 26th, you can already register. The sessions will be given by various people, uh, primarily by myself. I am Yoel Kortik, but also, for example, next week, we have a guest speaker, Moshe Schechter. Those of you who have heard Moshe will surely want to hear him again. The Automated Fulfillment Network in a Network Zone Consortium. Moshe will also be speaking on June 26th about a shared user file. Uh, so you can already begin registering. This schedule here is subject to change, not the ones which already have registration, but the ones which don't have registration are subject to change that we may be adding more. Uh, and I say we may be adding more. I'm just giving you some background. We're on the first session of the series. We thought a lot about this series. And in some cases, for example, here I say time permitting, we're also going to show this. If we don't have time to show this, we're going to make a separate session for these options here of controlling where to save the metadata records, uh, how to combine search results. So it may be subject to change, but everything which already has a registration link, which is the next, which is the first five sessions already, uh, you can already register for, and those will take place on those dates. These here have TBD to be decided, and we may be adding more depending on how the first five go. Uh, we don't want to rush, and we want to make sure we cover everything, so we'll do as many sessions as needed. Okay, and without further ado, let's jump in. If anyone has a question or comment along the way, feel free to send it in the chat. I'm just going to check the chat one more time just to see what's going on here, and I don't see any questions or comments. So very briefly, we're going to begin with the PowerPoint. So what is a network zone consortia why do we have a network zone consortia uh why wouldn't we for example make one super large institution with hundreds of libraries rather than having a network zone and the separate institutions so it allows for a combination of being able to share things when i say things i mean bibliographic data, access to electronic resources, uh, some other entities such as vendors, uh, just as an example, users also, we're going to be talking, I uh, showed you we have an upcoming session on a shared user file, uh, while also being able to maintain a level of privacy per institution. So unlike one super large institution, for example, if we had a consortia of 100 uh, institutions, which we do have, by the way, more than 100 even, rather than making one super large institution with a, with a thousand libraries, we say we'll have a network zone, we'll have member institutions, and then they can share data, but they can also maintain their own independence. So that's why we have the Network Zone Consortia. And during the migration process, before the migration process, actually, there's a, a process. Uh, it's called uh, deciding on the topology. And that topology is how is the ALMA going to be set up. And when it's decided to be a Network Zone Consortia, it is because of those needs to both share data as well as maintain some level of independence. So that's just a little background of what is the Network Zone Consortia. So like I said, we can share some data, such as the bibliographic data, and also things around acquisitions, such as, like I said, the vendors. We can have shared vendors. Uh, management of electronic resources. We're going to be talking about something called inventory network groups, so we can make uh, electronic resources which are in the network zone available for certain members and then when they get published to discovery they're published to discovery only for certain members uh, then we've got the resource sharing 
Uh, I'm going to call this here an ALMA fulfillment network among the member institutions of the network zone. We're going to be talking more about that. We've got a dedicated session on that we saw uh, where we can say first have a resource sharing request look only among the members of the network zone consortia and if no one has it then go outside the consortia and look. And then we have the sharing of patrons, a shared user file, which we've also got a session dedicated in that. It may even be next week. You know, next week, we've got the automated fulfillment network. Uh, so those are uh, examples, which we'll see during the series of things which can be shared. Uh, so it's maximizing cooperation between the member institutions while also being able to maintain that certain uh, level of privacy among institutions. If an institution has some bibliographic records which they don't want to share, then they don't have to share them. Uh, all the physical inventory we will see uh, is in the member institution only. Uh, so there's a level of privacy and there's a level of cooperation. That's the whole idea of a network zone consortia. In the example we'll be using here, and the examples we'll be using in the vast majority of the entire series. We have three member institutions. These are the members here, Alma University, Open University, and University of Knowledge. And then we have the network zone, which is called the Ex Libris University Consortium. This is our demo training environment for network zone consortia. Of course, we're not doing this on anyone's real live uh, environment. So we have Alma University, Open University, University of Knowledge. It looks like this. Uh, just for lack of a better way of doing the graphics here, the member institutions are on the bottom. But really, ideally, they would all be on the same line. This is the Network Zone Consortia, the Network Zone Institution on the top. Though I'm not really sure having it on the top uh, does justice to the importance of it. It's not a level of importance, it's just a way of saying all of these three here, the, the University of Knowledge, Open University, and Alma University are connected to that network zone consortia as member institutions. They're referred to as member institutions. Uh, so we're just going to look a little bit more here. So this we already showed that when we're in a network zone consortia, we've got these tabs. Uh, we also have this combined results option. The combined results option, the vast majority of network zone consortia are using. Uh, at least one is not using it, but it's recommended to use. We'll talk about that. Uh, and let's jump in now. So I'm going to go now to a member institution. We're going to just start looking at it. What we need to do in this first session, just a little personal background, I'll say, while planning this, is we have present here, or at least people who registered for this session, uh, people who have been live even since 2013. In 2013, the first Alma Network Zone Consortia went live in Europe, Belgium to be exact. Uh, and then along the way, others joined. There are some early ones also in North America, for example. Uh, Norway is one of the first also. So then we have ones which are currently in the migration process. And then we have ones who have been live for about a year. So we need to get everyone on the same page first before we jump into the, the in-depth de details so everybody's on the same level as far as understanding. So right now I'm in a member institution and I'm going to do an all title search. Now one other small little background comment before we go on. I'm using the new all title search. Maybe some of you have seen the new all title search. We showed it at Iluna. If those of you were, uh, if any of you were at Knowledge Days, I gave a session on it. And then there were some later sessions during the regular annual meeting. We've also had uh, some 
members working with the steering committee and the focus groups. So maybe some of you have seen it. I'm using the new all title search. I'll already do a new all title search um, because it's going to be going live in the second half of 2024. So if I don't use the new all title search, it would already be outdated if somebody starts looking at this in a few months in the recording. So we're using the new all title search. Some of you already have it activated. In any case, this is the new all title search. So right now I performed a search in the member institution open university all titles and i chose here the institution so right now i'm seeing only records which are in my institution and you can see i have 40. or to be more exact it may be records available for my institution and i'm going to talk about the available for more in depth in another session when we get to the electronic inventory. There's a dedicated session for the electronic inventory. And there we'll talk about it right here. How to manage the electronic resources. It's already, you can register for it June 19th, less than a month away. Uh, so I'm performing a search here. I can say I want combined results and combined results will give me what's in my institution as well as what's in my institution and in the network. You can see, for example, here when I chose combined results, I have 537 results here. And when I say I don't want the combined results, I want only my institution, I have 40. That means uh, 537 minus 40, are only in the network zone. What's that? 498, 497, if I'm not mistaken. In any case, so there are many which are only in the network and not in the institution. So now I'm searching only what's in the institution because I chose the scope here, institution. We call this a scope and I didn't change anything here. Now notice also the icon here uh has a picture of a house which means my institution and next to it a small picture of a network because i'm combining both the house and the network my institution and the network when i undo that combined results i only have the house so let's now to start seeing how the whole thing works let's say i want to search taiwan word from titles taiwan and I'm going to do that in the network scope. So I'm searching here network. And someone says that his institution or her institution does not have the combined results option. Correct. The combined results does not appear unless you requested for it to be a, to, for it to appear. And if you want it to appear when you do an all title search, if you do not have this, you need to request from Ex Libris via a support ticket to have it activated. Uh, usually during the migration process, people say they want it. Maybe for some reason it was decided at your institution that you didn't want it. In any case, if you want it here, open a support case and say, please enable the combined results when I'm searching in the member institution. All right, let's go again here. So we said we're searching all titles, network, Taiwan. And we get our results. Now, what do we see here? The held by, this one says held by one. And this is held by Alma University. Again, I'm an open university. And you'll recall <coughs> from our picture here, one of the other members is Alma University. So that means that the record that I just found here, let's go back to the record. This one is not held by my institution. It's held by another institution, which is Alma University. We're gonna see soon how, if I now want to use this record, for example, maybe I want to make a purchase order line for this journal, Taiwan, published by the Taiwan Pictorial Society. 
uh, instead of me cataloging my own, we'll see, I can order, make an order on this one, and then it's going to create inventory in my institution. This one here is held by two member institutions, one Alma University and one the University of Knowledge. So neither of these two are held by me. However, uh, I can still see them here. Now, these would be results that would appear when we did the combined results. They would appear, if you recall, we had 40 in my institution, 537 when we did the combined results. So these are some of those which answer our query, but uh, we're not in my institution. Now, here, it's also Alma University. And also Alma University, none of these are held by me, but I'm still seeing them because I searched in the network zone. Now, this one here, Taiwan Review, is held by me, and it says my institution. Instead of saying Open University, when something is held by my institution, it will say my institution instead of... Uh, instead of saying the actual name of the institution. It makes it easier instead of looking around at names. It always says my institution. Let's now come back here for a moment. And I see there was another question about that co combined results. Let's take a look there. Someone asked, do you ask for combined results to be enabled for your IZ only? Yes, you request the combined results is only re relevant for the member institution. I don't know if your stress here is on your or on IZ. You say, do you ask for combined results to be enabled for your IZ only? So if you mean your IZ only, you can say you want it only for your member institution and not the other member institutions. That's if you have the stress on your, and if your stress is on IZ, yes, it's only relevant for the institution zone, for the member institution. It's not relevant for the network zone institution. Okay, let's go on. So let's see here, what would happen if I say, for example, Taiwan, I'll say keywords. So let's even go a little crazier. We'll do an advanced search. Word from title Taiwan and word from creator, creator noise. A institution Taiwan. Oh, I must have spelled that wrong. Let's do this, the first name. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> Let's say keywords, we'll say. Taiwan and keywords. Okay. Okay, I get nothing. I'm going to switch to the network now. And now I get these two. I didn't see them when I searched in my institution because this is in Alma University and this is in Alma University and University of Knowledge and I am the open university. So that shows the advantage of that combined results. When we're only in the institution, right now I needed to do two searches. Because here, when I say keywords this, keywords this, I get nothing. So now I need to do another search in the network, and then I find it. Whereas if I'm using the combined results here, I find even here the records, depending on what they are in my results. But now I do have it, and when I don't have combined results, I'm not finding them. So that's the advantage of the combined results. Let's see now if I'm in the network zone scope and I'm searching portfolios. So let's say electronic portfolios. And I've got here the network zone scope. And again, let's say word from title Taiwan. Now notice also, 
even though here the institution is what's on focus, because I'm searching the network scope here, it's going to give my results in the network. It doesn't matter what is in focus when I first start. So here I get the results in the network. And these are using something called available four, which I stated we're going to talk more in depth soon uh, in another session, the one about electronic inventory. But I do want to point something out on these. So these, this is available for Alma University and Open University. Let me open the facets here because I want to show something here. Uh, this is available for Alma University. This is available for Alma, Alma University and Open University. And notice here I've got a facet. So one of the facets, oops, sorry about that. One of the facets here, sorry, I hit a different facet, is the available four. Let me open that up a little more. Now it's opened up permanent. Uh, I click the chevron here to open it per permanent. So I can filter this. I'm in the network, but if I want to filter everything in the network, but only those available for my institution, then I can say my institution, and then I'll get only those available for my institution. They might also be available for another institution, but they're at least available for mine. All of these will include Open University, as you can see here. And that's because these are records which are in the network zone with a parameter called available for. For example, let's say this Taiwan, Taiwan Communications. If I say here, electronic portfolios, title contains phrase. I want to say phrase Taiwan Communications, so I won't get all records with that anywhere in the title. Searching the network, I get it. And it's available for my institution. If I switch to institution, I don't see it. Now, I'm stating this because you might think, or someone, I mean, when I say you, I mean someone might think, oh, this is available for my institution, which is Open University. So I would see this in my institution. But as we'll see when we get to that June, I believe it was June 19th, that June 19th session, the electronic inventory can, and it's even a recommended practice, can be handled exclusively in the network zone and then defined to be available for certain institutions. I'm going to switch browsers for a moment. And now I'm in the institution, which is the network zone. You see, for all of these member institutions and the network zone, we have an icon of the institution. So this one says network. It might be too small to see, but I'm in the network zone now. So if I were to search for that title here, let's say I want electronic portfolios here, and I want the electronic portfolio title or the title in general. So let's get the title. And again, I'll say contains phrase. Taiwan Communications. I'm sorry about that. Taiwan Communications. So it's in the network zone. This says institution. I'm now in the network zone institution. So it doesn't have three options of institution, network, and community because the institution itself is the network. And Taiwan Communications is in there, and it's in an electronic collection called eBook Central Perpetual DDA and Subscription Titles. If we look at that collection, we're going to see why it's available for Open University, and I believe it was available for another one. So I'm going to edit the collection, and we're going to see that we have a tab for the available four groups, so I've picked a huge one. This has 846,296 collection uh, portfolios. Okay, we'll be patient. Uh, so there's something called the inventory network groups, which we'll talk in depth about 
in a dedicated session. However, right now, our goal is to show why Taiwan Communications states that it's available for Open University, yet when I search for this inside the institution, I don't see it. There we go. So there's something called group settings in the electronic collection. And in the group settings, I can add a group of institutions for whom the electronic resource is available. It can be on the level of the electronic collection or it can be on the level of the institution. Uh, excuse me, it can be on the level of the electronic collection or on the level of the portfolio. If it's on the level of the electronic collection, of course, oral portfolios will inherit. And I've got all kinds of different groups here uh, where I can say it's available for all of them or it's available for one of them or it's available for a certain group. For example, here I've got Alma University and University of Knowledge. Here I've got Open University and Alma University. Uh, and then I've got another one called All Member Institutions, which didn't appear in the pull down box because it's already chosen. So that's why here, when I search in the institution, I don't see it because the record itself is in the network and it's available for my institution. Now, that's one of the advantages when we were talking about cooperation uh, and sharing in a network zone consortia, that entire collection, the entire collection of 800 something thousand portfolios is in the network zone and then made available for certain institutions. So it's a very big advantage. Instead of there being 800,000 bibliographic records, 842,296 portfolios with their corresponding bibliographic records in all of the consortia, imagine there's even only 10. Imagine there's 10 member institutions and they're all handling this separately. That would mean that there would be, uh, I don't want to do the math here. Okay, it would be 8 million right? 8 million, because we just add another zero, two zeros actually. In any case, instead of 846,000 times 10, we have it only once. That means all of the maintenance on it is done only once. Uh, the community zone updates task list is done only once. Uh, if we're using the upload electronic holdings, it's done only once. That's a big advantage. And Specifically for our session right now, where we're giving an introduction to a member institution in the network zone, that's why it appears here and not in the institution. However, when I'm searching in the network, I can see which ones are available for which institutions. Let's do Portfolios Taiwan <laughs> again. So I can filter by those available for me or those available for other institutions. Uh, so that's the available for, and like I said, we'll talk about that more in depth at another stage. Gale Business Insights is another example where there's an electronic collection which is in the community zone and it's made available for the different institutions. Gale Business Insights here. So if I click on one of these, this is available all member institutions also. So that would be included, Taiwan Economic News. Let's go right on Taiwan Economic News. Economic News. So the available four includes all three of the member institutions. And if I choose any of them, I get it. It's not something available only for that one. It's among all of those for whom the resource is available. It's also available for all the university. That is one of them. So you don't need to do three. If it's available for all three, you don't need to do three different uh, facets in order to get yours. Now I've got this one because it's available for all three. If I get rid of University of Knowledge, now I also have the European Union and China 
because this one is available only for Alma University and Open University. This is a classic example that I like to use for showing the scopes here of the available four. The first one is available for all three. Therefore, if I scope by all three of them, I get it. The second one is available only for Alma University and Open University. Therefore, if I scope by all three, I'm going to add this to the available four scopes. And now I no longer get the one that's only available for Open University and Alma University. So that's the electronic portfolio search. So we saw the all title search. We saw the electronic portfolio search. And now let's talk about the holdings per inventory per institution. And when I say the holdings, I mean in this case, both electronic holdings being a portfolio and a holdings record for physical inventory. Because even though I showed now the available four, it's also technically possible to have a bibliographic record in the network zone and then locally have a portfolio. And so instead of using the available four, the bibliographic record is in the network zone and then the portfolio or the electronic collection and portfolio is in the member institution. But before we get that, let's go take a look at the chats and see what we've got there. We're now at 37 past the hour. Okay, chat. Can someone ask, can you do available for institutions if you also do available for campus per institution? I believe so, but I'm always apprehensive to answer a question like that before. Actually, oh, that's yes, yes, yes. We added a new feature, I believe in May even, very recently. Uh, that the available for network groups can go instead of saying make it available only for the entire institution, you can say it is in the facets. Uh, yes, it is in the facets in that group will appear, but it won't say available for campus. It would be the available for whatever you named the inventory network group that applies to that campus. So yes, you can you can facet by whatever network group you made available for that campus, but it's not going to say available for it's not going to have a separate section available for campus. Just as an aside to those of you not familiar with what I just said and what our participant asked, we're kind of getting into the inventory network groups. But there are ways to say, I'm just going to show this briefly, uh, inventory network groups. I can make a new group and I can give a group whatever I want. I can even call it apples and oranges. And then I can say whatever I want it to say. It could be the campus downtown whatever of institution X. And then... I can start playing around with that. Where is it right here? And then I can start adding members. And when I add members, there's a way that I can say, don't add all of University of Knowledge at University of Knowledge and certain libraries or certain campuses. So that available for facet would have this name here. It wouldn't have the, it wouldn't say campuses. Because it could be just libraries and not a whole campus. Okay, uh, so, but let's not get too in depth on that one because we let's save that for another day. We've got plenty of days here. Uh, yes, yeah, someone he even said or she even said, I'm trying to keep it anonymous. Maybe a question for June 19. Can you guys see everyone's questions? Can you see who's asking? I always try to keep it anonymous, but maybe you see the names anyway. Uh, available, someone asks, or states, available for can be set at the level of the electronic collection or at the level of the service. We are using the service level. What is recommended? Are there advantages? Let's save that one as well uh, for, I'm going to write that one down, though, for myself. I say write it down all the time, but of course, I'm not writing anything. 
Uh, so let me just take that one with me because we'll, we'll talk about that. I don't want to go too far into a whole nother topic, which we'll talk about at another day. We have a dedicated session, but I want to put that one down for my own personal use for later. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, so you can't see who's asking. Okay, so I'll continue. Someone wrote they can't see who's asking. So I'll con con continue to put it um, anonymously, and then you can all ask questions without worrying someone's going to see what you asked. Think if you don't want to, if you don't want them to know, and I won't say your name. All right. So let's go on. So we were talking about now looking at the holdings per institution. So let's go back again. And let's again do an old title search. So I'm going to say back. By the way, uh, like I apologized before that we had to re redo this session because we had those technical issues yesterday. We actually got more registrants for the new session today. So maybe it was um, maybe it was actually good that we had that. Uh, let me just make sure everyone is still, everyone's still hearing. Just send in the chat. You see, it's still here and still see. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I do want, okay, great. Everyone sees in here's. All right. So I'm going to come back to the old title search now in the member institution. So we're going to say all titles. We'll stay with our Taiwan example. Okay, and I'm searching now the met the member. I'm going to search the network instead. And so we saw here that we have the held by. Now I can see the details also of what is the holdings at that institution. Maybe I want to see here. Okay, so they have it. What do they have? So if I click this, what's going to open is called a sliding panel. A lot of the new UI, those of you who have been using the new UI, for example, for the analytics objects and for the uh, the holdings records and for the sets, will know this, what just slid out there is called a sliding panel. And it allows the user to maintain focus on his or her search and then his he or she can just close it. So now I see the details of that holdings at the Alma University. So I can see where they've got it. I can see in this case, the summary holdings, how many items they have, etc. I'm going to click the X here. Now you see I'm still, I didn't lose my focus. It didn't open up a new screen that I need to say back on. This one here is held by two institutions. So if I click, for example, Alma University, I will see what's held by Alma University and I will have a link to see what's held by University of Knowledge. Here we go. So I open that and now here I am, I'm on Alma University. So you have one item, the item is available, there's no request, here's the call number. And then I can come here and say, okay, now I wanna see what's at University of Knowledge. Okay, this is at University of Knowledge and I've got information on that as well. These don't have orders. We also have order information when there are orders. There's certain information which doesn't appear because that was a request. Uh, Alma University, so again, coming along here. Uh, now I see Alma University. This is for electronic. This is something not using the available for. This is an actual portfolio in Alma University in this case. So that's the links to the holdings. If I click that held by and I get the details here of who it's held by, I can click on that. And then I see the details of the holding. Representations would be if it was a, uh, a digital inventory. Let's do a quick search here for Gale Business Insights, all titles. And so this is an electronic collection, Gale Business Insights. It's in the network zone, so it's not really held by anybody. I'm going to say electronic collection, electronic collection name. And it's got the available four, but the available four, we saw the available four when we went to the network zone institution. Uh, 
the available four does not have a link to a certain institution because like we saw a moment ago, this is handled in the network zone itself. Okay, so let's move on now to the bibliographic records in the institution. So let's do again uh, a search in the network zone scope. I'm still in the open university. And let's say open university, all titles, title. And let's say we search, for example, now for Taiwan movement and network zone scope. Okay, so let's even say I wanted one specific Taiwan women's movement. Let's say women's. Okay, so here we have show the bibliographic record in the institution. And the reason we have that is because this is held by my institution. And if I want to see this in my institution, I can click here. And then after I click here, I will have a link to view it in the network. Notice here, this is on the network icon in the search scope. I'm going to click here where it says, show the bibliographic record in the institution. Now I'm looking at it in the institution. You can see that this changed. It's now in the institution scope. Here, I'm seeing the bibliographic record from the network. However, there's a possibility to add to this bibliographic record something which is called local extensions. We have a session on local extensions. Here it is, to be decided on the date. We're already up to July 24th, but we have a session on local extensions where, because you might be saying, well, why are you showing the bibliographic record in my institution? It's the same everywhere. I can have my own local extensions here, unique to my institution that other institutions don't see. And I also see all of the other parts, such as the holdings of my institution, the items of my institution, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's why we're able to see it. And then this click in the network would bring me right back to the network. Let's look, for example, at, let's stop here. Let's get out of here. I'm going to say back. This is where we viewed it in the institution. Okay. Let's see another one. For example, feminist futures reimagining woman held by Alma University. So it's not held by my institution. It's held by a different institution. Therefore, I don't have the link to view it in the network because it's mine. Excuse me, it's not mine. So I can't say view this record in the institution like I can here because it's not held by me. And if I were to search for this women's movements in the 20th century, in my institution, then I've got the link to view it in the network. Just like when I was in the network, I had the link show bibliographic record in institution. When I'm in the institution, I've got the link here, show bibliographic record in the network. Now, we've got 11 minutes. Uh, I stated that one of the goals here was to be able to take a record which is in the network zone and use that for myself. So let's again say Taiwan movements. Okay, maybe for example, there's a record which I want to order and instead of me cataloging my own, I want to 
use one that already exists in the network. I mean, that's an example of cooperation. Then I don't have to manage my own bibliographic network. By the way, as many of you may know, Alma is based on subscription. One of those subscriptions is the number of bibliographic records. When everything's handled in the network zone or the majority is handled in the network zone, there's a lot less overall bibliographic networks, excuse me, bibliographic records. Let's say I want academic, maybe, maybe I want to order something called academic library uh, development uh, and administration. Maybe there's a new item out and I want to order this. So, of course, before I order something, I want to make sure I don't have it. So, I'll search my institution. And I don't have it. So I say, well, maybe that's in the network. I could do the combined results, but let's not. So now I say, oh, it's in the network. Someone else already has it, Alma University. So first of all, maybe I'll say, oh, I won't even order it. Alma University has it if I need it uh, via the fulfillment network that we'll talk about next week. A patron can use it. Or maybe I'll say, no, I do want to order it. So again, no. When I search for it in my institution, I'm even going to take a picture. I do not have it. Okay. I searched in the institution here. And for this, and I don't have it, it says there's no records. Now, so from the network, I'm going to order it. I'm creating now a purchase order line in my institution. The purchase order lines are per institution. Purchase order lines are not in the network. We can share other parts, such as the vendors. We'll talk about that another day. I'll say I want here a physical one time. I'll do this quickly because it's not a session on uh, acquisitions. I'll say I want it in the central library. And I'll just give it a vendor, a fund, and a price, just the, the bare minimum. And what we're going to see is because I will have inventory in my institution, I'll make this the Alicia Hen International Publishers. And I'll give it a price. And I'll give it a fund. And that's enough for our purposes saved. So now it's creating inventory in my institution because when I create for physical, here it is. Here's my inventory ordered items. I'll save that order. Now I'm going to do the same search. So now it's held by two, my institution also. And if I had performed that search in the member, now I do have it. Here's before we searched here and we got no results. Now we search after making an order because I have now uh, inventory for it. That inventory was created from a purchase order line. This is an important part here. This is a prime example of the usefulness of uh, the shared network, the collaboration in a network zone consortia. I don't have to go start cataloging the record. I don't need to go copy it from somewhere. I don't need the vendor to send me a, a record. I don't need to maintain it. Uh, all of the authorities, for example, can be handled from the network zone and automatically get updated. Everything's handled there, and we'll see in another session, like I stated, if I want, I can change the bibliographic record just for me by using local extensions. Let's say an, another example where I don't make an order, but I'm only adding inventory. Let's say I want, for example, the Penguin Anthology of 20th Century Taiwanese Poetry. I'll leave out 20th Century. Okay. So I don't have it. In my institution, I'll check the network. It is in the network, held by one. Last time we clicked order, 
And when we clicked order, that also created the inventory as part of the order for something physical. I could, however, instead of taking, instead of doing the whole order, I could just edit the record and add inventory manually here. When I say manual, I mean as opposed to the purchase order line creating it. Here I am in the Penguin Anthology. We can see here that it's in the network. We got the icon here of the network. And I'll say here, add inventory. I'll make a holdings record first. And then I'll add an item. Although I don't even need an item. A holdings record is enough to be considered physical holdings, a physical title save. Okay, so now I have our holdings and an item. I'm going to release these, although that's not necessary, but in case I want to play with it later. Uh, let's get rid of these bibliographic records as well. Now, if we do that same search <coughs> in the institution, I do have it. And if I do that search in the network, I have it, and it's held by my institution. So in both cases, I was able to use a bibliographic record from the network zone and create inventory for it so that it would be held by my institution without me needing to create my own bibliographic record. There's one shared bibliographic record here. This bibliographic record is shared by everybody. And let's even say view record. I went into the split editor mode in the view record. By the way, we have a session for the Alma 2024 Roadmap webinar series dedicated to the new all title search. And by the way, to the linked data. Next week is linked data. Uh, so, here, if I say view record, this record is in the network zone, and I have inventory for it. Alma University also has inventory for it, but we have one bibliographic record. Now, there might be cases, one more example, where I'm going the other direction, from my member institution to the network zone. For example, if I search here in the network zone, Taiwan in pictures doesn't appear. I search the member Taiwan in pictures. I do have it. So now we have a case of a record which is not shared with the network for whatever reason. Maybe someone made a mistake. Maybe at one time they didn't want it shared with the network. As we go through the series, we're going to see various use cases for different uh, workflows. But right now, this is not shared with the network. We see here, when I search the network, I do not get it. I could take this record. Let's say edit record. We got two minutes. And from within here, I can say, take this and share it with the network. Record actions share with network. By the way, there's also a job where I can take a whole set and do this. Now, it's going to share with the network. And that means it will be in the network zone and I it will be held by me. And then the advantage there is any other institution can go and use it. Now you can see here, now it has the icon of the network zone. Let's release it. Now if we do this same search, Taiwan in pictures, now it's in the net, it's in the member, it has a link to the network. And if I had searched the network, I see it there with a link back to the institution and the held by my institution. Okay, it's 59 minutes past the hour. So we're of course not going to start a brand new topic. Oh, I didn't even have my video on the whole time. I'll flip her on now. Uh, and let's just see the chat. Uh, Rialto order records load into the IZ, so always need to share to the NZ. Okay, are you? Uh, I assume you're making a statement from that as opposed to a question. If that's the case, thanks for pointing that out. If it's a question you wanted, I'd be glad to. But yes, what you're saying. If 
and thanks for sharing that. Uh, looking to see if there's any other questions here. I don't see any other questions. Okay. So before we close, let's just let me just point out one more time. So next week, we've got on June 5th, the Automated Fulfillment Network. We hope to see you there. And you can already register for the next five sessions. And I also want to point out, just in case somebody doesn't know, we've got the Alma 2024 Roadmap Webinar Series going on as well. And next week, which is June 4th, you don't want to miss the Linked Open Data in Alma session. We're going to be showing, for example, among many other things, the Linked Data Info card, the Contributor page, the Linked Data Enrichment page, some developments we did around Homosaurus. There was a lot of requests on that. And you can link to that. You can register for that via the Alma 2024 Roadmap Webinar Series. I'll put that out in the link or like you saw in the chat, I mean. And like you saw, you can just search for Alma 2024 Roadmap Webinar Series. So thanks, everyone, for joining. And we hope to see you next week, June 4 and June 5. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.